so um, I'm Antal van den Bos. I'm a, a, a member of the board of uh, Clarin. Uh, so the next two sessions uh, will be about um, uh, Clarin. So if you're familiar with Clarin, you'll be eager to get updated by uh, the, the committees. If you're not familiar to Clarin, this is going to be really interesting because uh, you'll get to know some of the the insights, uh, the, the committee's working hard on aspects, uh, important aspects of, uh, of the Clarin organization. Uh, service to us all. So uh, the, we're going to to listen to uh, six uh, short presentations, pitches by the chairpersons of these uh, committees. The, that's, that means five minutes each. I'll be taking uh, the time and 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 waving if uh, the speaker is uh, getting over time. Maybe there's time for questions, and we'll take those. The first presentation is uh, by uh, uh, Lena Offersgaard, who's uh, going to talk about the Clarin Assessment Committee. She will be the only one presenting all, uh, online. The others are here. So let's, uh, let's get uh, connected. Um, and I hope the technique will do that for us. Yes. So Lena, the floor is yours. Thank you. And next slide, please. Thank you. So first, for all those that are used to come to the conference and hear what's going on, a quick, uh, some quick words about the B-Center assessment status. And perhaps I should add the first slide had mentioned that the assessment committee is for the B-Centers. So here are some news about what we've done the last year. We got one brand new B-Center, that's uh, the, the Greek Center. And we have one more newbie center in the core trust seal process, and that's uh, uh, Clarin LV. So one kind of term to really know and remember when we talk about B center assessments is the core trust seal. That's a certification. That's an outside Clarin process that you go through to become a B center. And uh, and that's a, a task in its own uh, stand. So, so you will uh, we, you will men know about it uh, later on. Also, uh, we have uh, two reassessments that had got the uh, court for seals renewed, and we have in the assessment process the the latest round uh, from April. Seven uh, centers attended, and one got the core trust seal already. And six centers are in the core trust seal process. And then there is some centers from earlier rounds that also is still in the CTS process. Uh, remember that it it takes easily six months to get the feedback from the from the core trust seal reviewers. So uh, if you plan to join the the round uh, later uh, please uh, try to put in your core trust seal uh, application uh, yeah six months ahead it, it's fine uh, ju or just do it when when you apply next slide please so for those that are not used to think about being b senders uh, here is just the, the quick steps uh, first, you become a so-called C sender. That means that we harvest your metadata to the VLO. Then you fill in the application for the core trust seal. But Clarin will pay the fee, so at least that's not to bore, bother about. Then you fill in the checklist for the B senders, and you can always ask us questions if you want. Then you apply for the B center certification. You send both your checklist and attach your core trust seal application. And then we will uh, come back uh, for some clarifications or questions to you. And the core trust seal people will also get back with some feedback. And when you in the end get the core trust seal, then tell us. And you can always just mail us at this address. Next slide, please. So. We have some next assessments round coming up by the end of October and the next one end of April next year. And uh, one uh, new thing that we want to mention here 
is that you can get help from the curation dashboard to check in your resources about links and profiles and so. And that's easily done at that address. And um, then I would say that uh, we will do minor updates to the checklist before April, but there will not be uh, any new uh, demands uh, for you, but we will do some minor updates. And when you get the B Center status, it's synchronized now with the core trust seal, so it will be, have a validity of three years. And you can always pose your questions at this address. Next slide, please. So just here in the end, I would say that until now, uh, we have had a committee uh, with the names uh, to the left. And, um, and now we yesterday are kind of uh, having a committee that has a, to get a formal approval by the right uh, parts of Clarion leadership. But uh, you can see that I hand over the chairing to Menso and we will have new uh, people on board. So here in the end, I will just thank uh, all the people in the old committee and a special thanks to, to Dan and Joseph that in my time as chair had been my kind of practical vice chairs. And also a thanks to Dieter for always helping us out when things get a bit complicated. So that's all from now. And uh, I wish the new committee all the best. Uh, th thank you. Thank you very much, Lena. Um, so uh, for the next upcoming presentations, uh, you will be able to talk to the uh, people who are doing the presentations uh, later in the, uh, or even at the bazaar, because some committees have uh, have a stand there. Um, so I'd like to, to call upon the floor now um, uh, uh, Martin Matthiesen, who's, who is the chair of the Standing Committee on Cla the Claren Technical Centers Committee, the CCTC. Yes, thank you, Antal. So I have only one slide. And um, I'd like to first introduce the uh, Standing Committee for Claren Technical Centers with a few basic facts. So our job is to ensure the technical consistency um, between the centers, uh, liaise with the uh, Center Assessment Committee, um, report to the Board of Directors, and we are a forum of, uh, to exchange ideas and experiences across the centers. And in the last year, we had uh, nine meetings. So that's uh, one meeting uh, per month, roughly, and then a break in the summer and in the winter. And uh, we um, uh, made an amendment to the um, assessment checklist um, for recommendations for federated login. I won't go into detail now. You can ask me about that um, directly. And we had a mini series on information exchange about uh, sensitive data processing at uh, various centers last year. And we have a new push for uh, cross-border backups, which uh, is actually connected to the present situation or which has been inspired by the uh, present situation. And then we have um, a push for uh, refreshing committees and task forces. And uh, there I would like to go a little bit into more detail. So the situation at the moment is not bad. You've just seen that the um, assessment committee successfully um, nominated a new chair and new members, uh, but it is increasingly hard to find active members for various groups. Um, so, but we have already uh, some ideas how to make meetings more accessible without slowing them down. And I know some task forces are rethinking their role and scope. So I see a lot of interest and goodwill to improve communication and collaboration in the future. So I'm really quite hopeful. And on the slide here, you also see uh, the center assessments of last year. Um, they have to be formally approved by the uh, SCTC. So that's why they are on this slide as well. And uh, this is all from my part. Uh, why, wait a minute. One thing I would like to add, and that is uh, I would like to um, thank um, Julia Mizerski for her um, support in the last year. It was really invaluable. Thanks, Julia.
Are there any questions uh, that you might have on this committee? No? Okay, so uh, calling to the floor, uh, Bente Megat, uh, who's the chair uh, of the Knowledge Infrastructure Committee, KIC. Thank you very much. Um, <coughs> So uh, my first slide here tells that at, in Claren we have a technical infrastructure and a knowledge infrastructure. And of course, I'm representing the knowledge infrastructure committee as you saw. So <clears throat> this is just to our view of the world. So uh, the knowledge infrastructure committee, uh, its tasks are described in the uh, bylaws and it's a twofold thing. Uh, we need to advise the BOD about the knowledge infrastructure strategy and policy, uh, the promotion of knowledge infrastructure related activities and approval of applications like uh, applications for establishing a new knowledge center, et cetera, and also for funding instruments if we are asked about this. So this is the advisory part and then there's also an implementation part um, where we uh, we also we are actually doing things we are uh, producing things as parts of the strategy in agreement with the BOD. We are uh, seven members of the uh, committee and that's also in the bylaws so it's a small committee you see and that's also necessary I think if you really need to also do implementation. What have we been doing? Well, the case centers are a, a very important part of our portfolio, and you can see the case centers uh, if you follow that link. Uh, in the year that passed since last time, one new case center has been approved, the Clarion Knowledge Center for Digital and Public Textual Scholarship in Italy. And unfortunately, we had to suspend our relationship with one case center that is the one in Belarus. Um, so this means that Clarin now has 25 knowledge centers and we have two more applications in the pipeline. And if there are people around here who also want to apply, this is of course always possible. Um, we organized a, a workshop for the case centers um, in uh, December, uh, with the purpose of uh, creating a community of case centers, promoting the collaboration between the case centers, and this was very well received, and uh, we will continue to have these workshops, there ought to be one this year, I hope. Uh, we have, uh, as you know, case centers will need a certificate for, of approval, and uh, it, it, it lasts for three years. And in this period, we have uh, renewed 19 case center certificates. And uh, did they all uh, appear at the same time, you could ask? No, uh, we didn't realize that we were a bit behind. So there's been some something to do. This won't uh, continue at the same uh, pace. And there's something new. The best practice papers uh, collection has started with case center papers. And you can also find that on the uh, uh, knowledge infrastructure uh, page. I, I think I would really like you to have a look at that and you can also suggest uh, where to go next. We uh, will continue supporting uh, case center visibility and also try to make sure we have the case centers that are needed or wanted. Uh, we will organize <coughs> a workshop and uh, we'll also uh, try to promote the visibility of the case centers. Um, yeah, I think that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, are there any questions? Okay, so uh, next we'll hear about the Claren Legal and Ethical Issues Committee. Uh, click with the chair, Pavel Kamochki. 
Hello. Thank you very much, Tal. Good morning. My name is Pavel Kamotsky, and I am chairing, uh, I have the honor uh, of chairing uh, the Claren Legal and Ethical Issues uh, Committee. What we do, well, quite a lot of things. Uh, we launched and we maintain a legal information platform that is available on the Claren website. Uh, there you can find quite a lot of information, very concise and accessible form about various um, legal issues affecting uh, language resources and our infrastructure, uh, as well as our publications, white papers, articles, slides from our presentations and links to other similar uh, resources. I bet you have already worked with Claren uh, licenses, and this is also us. Uh, we launched them uh, a long time ago, and uh, we maintain them and update them uh, from time to time. We regularly publish on uh, legal issues. Uh, we also have a chapter in the recently uh, announced, uh, the recently published a Claren book. Um, we regularly organize workshops and events, and our next event is a Claren Cafe on November 8th, and it's on the subject of uh, text and data mining exceptions um, um, and the effect, the impact on uh, language research specifically. And uh, I'm proud to announce that we will have uh, quite a, an impressive lineup of uh, speakers. Uh, so do join us and participate in the discussion because of course, no lineup is truly all-star without you. We also create legal tech tools uh, that have been used and endorsed by various communities, but they were built with Claren in mind. That is the public license selector that was developed actually with uh, our colleagues from UFAL, uh, uh, the uh, um, organizers, so to say, the hosts of, of this event. There is also a license category calculator and a consent form wizard. All, there, all, all this is there for free for you to use. Um, and since we live in really interesting times, um, I am, um, well, I hope you'll find this uh, uh, information interesting uh, that a uh, new and rather groundbreaking uh, legal um, act, uh, a regulation has been adopted by the European uh, Commission. It was adopted on 30th of May, uh, 2022, and it will enter into application on um, September 24, 2023, so a little less than a year from now. It's called the Data Governance Act, uh, and it um, will revolutionize uh, at least three areas uh, relevant for our activities. First of all, uh, it will make protected data held by public sector bodies available for reuse, so more high quality, often, for example, human translated data, language data for us to use, that's a good thing. Second thing, it introduces a detailed framework for providers of data intermediation services. Not that good, you'll learn more about it if you attend our presentation. And uh, third of all, there is a framework for data altruism organizations and delta, data altruism uh, is a new and uh, most exciting development uh, in the field of data policy uh, and data strategy in the European Union. Moreover, this uh, Data Governance Act will also create a European Data Innovation Board. So uh, if you're curious, if you, are, if you want to learn more about any of these bullet points, uh, attend our presentation today at uh, five past three, uh, a presentation by the one and only Krista Linden and yours truly. Thank you very much indeed. Thank you. Um, very exciting uh, prospect. Um, all, uh, so are there any questions right now? No? Okay, so I call upon the floor Piotr uh, Banski. 
Uh, the chair of the Clarence Standards Committee. The floor is yours. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Piotr. I'm presenting a pitch for the Clarence Standards Committee. And I begin uh, with some highlights from the meeting we had yesterday. Uh, we welcomed Antal van den Bos uh, as our new liaison uh, to the board of directors. And uh, well, during the meeting, we could see that our vibes match pretty closely. So this is a strengthening. Uh, uh, we have a new release uh, of the standards information system uh, done especially for this conference. Uh, and we also uh, have described, and by we here, I mean uh, Hannah Hedeland and myself, uh, the work, some of the work of the committee and some of the standard story of Clarin uh, in, uh, in a chapter of the uh, anniversary Clarin book. Uh, and yeah, in the next slide, I say firm prospects, I should say resolutions. Uh, uh, we have uh, decided to tighten uh, the cooperation with the Centers Committee and uh, to exchange closer with the assessment committee. And uh, this may sound, uh, sound as, you know, as kind of some kind of buzz phrases, but, uh, uh, but we think that this tightening of cooperation is pretty vital. Martin has mentioned that in his pitch as well. Uh, so yeah, so we're going to tighten the Clarin internal links and, uh, Again, it sounds like buzz phrases, but uh, we are going to uh, to work on strengthening the Clarin message uh, to the Clarin community and uh, outside communities uh, because these are the times for that. I think, uh, yeah. Uh, now, a few words about the standards information system, uh, split into categories of users. Uh, you learn. Uh, you you will be able to learn more about that uh, during Bazaar. Uh, for end users, uh, the SIS uh, offers uh, offers them to learn uh, where they can bring their data and to learn more about the data. Uh, for clearing de uh, developers. Uh, uh, we offer them to uh, to be able to look up information about formats including how formats trend, because we've got some statistics and uh, there will be more statistics upcoming. Uh, for B-Centers, we offer an easy way to handle one of the certification requirements. Uh, and for well, Clarin governance uh, at large, uh, we offer a way to compute uh, one of the key performance indicators dynamically as, as the centers uh, supply the data. Uh, and we need more members. So the last slide is about why you want to ask your national coordinator to be appointed uh, as a member, because that's the way, that's the formal way into the committee. Uh, if you are strategically minded, uh, you will be able to work with us on the harmonization of standards between Clarineric and related initiatives. Uh, this uh, sentence is lifted directly from our bylaws. Uh, and uh, and this is, yeah, again, uh, the current climate and the need for visibility uh, of Clarin uh, make this issue quite pressing. Uh, if you're a managerial type of a person, uh, you will be able to work on uh, devising uh, new types of uh, statistics about Clarin centers and by, in, uh, by extension Clarin in general. Uh, if you're an infrastructure developer, you are you will be very welcome uh, to apply or share your experience and uh, to be part of standardization in the making because uh, Clarin, as uh, well as the Clarin developers know best, uh, has been quite a, quite a melting pot for uh, for new uh, best practices and uh, eventually standards uh, in various ways. Uh, so this is a really uh, an interesting area to observe uh, standardization processes uh, as they happen. Uh, and well, lastly, if you're an ex-query or database aficionado, uh, you can work with us on further development of the standards information system. Thank you.
Thank you, Piotr. Um, so uh, last but not least, uh, the Claren User Involvement Committee, uh, represented by its chair, Maria Gavrile Didou, please. Hello, everyone. I represent the User Involvement Committee, and I would uh, like to first um, present what we do. We're a committee of 24 members currently, which means that each country has one representative in this committee. And uh, what we do is that we act as antennas between Clarin Eric and the National Consortia, which means we undertake to promote and support Clarin Eric activities related to user involvement at the national level. And on the other hand, uh, report on the national user involvement activities to the BOD and the other national consortia. So in this uh, very short pitch, I will um, focus on the national UI, UI activities that took place in the last year because uh, they showcase one of Clarin's best strengths, the national activities and uh, on user involvement. So in this past year, we had 189 user involvement activities in total recorded. Uh, the uh, biggest number of activities were organized by Sweden, 40 events and activities, followed by Poland with 30 and Italy with 21. But we had four more consortia that had more than 11, Finland, Austria, Greece, and Norway. So, but it is important to note that almost all members and observer uh, countries had at least one event. So user involvement took place in all national um, consortia. So what were the types of these activities that took place? The majority were teaching activities, which is very important that it, because it means that climbing is getting integrated into teaching, into education. There were organizational activities, and by that we refer to uh, organization of conferences, workshops, webinars, seminars, etc. Uh, there were academic dissemination activities, publications and stuff like that. And the less uh, frequent was media dissemination activities. There was, however, a significant number of activities classified as other by the national consortia, which means that they did not fall into any of the four above categories. So uh, the national consortia uh, gave some details on what this other was. So these uh, type of activities fall into broadly uh, three categories, subcategories, technical administrative, what we call technical administrative activities, and by this, we refer to uh, meetings that were held among national consortia and third parties outside Clarin for the preparation of project proposals or applications of funding. And this is considered important because it signifies liaison of Clarin with the outside world for joint endeavors like project proposals. Most important, what we think most important because we are user involvement committee, is activities related to user support, which are gaining ground more and more. And that by that we mean activities that had continuous user support, either um, proactively or reactively, either that, uh, responding to user requests or organizing events to uh, support the users. And this is, we consider important because it in integrates the gradual formation of a client user community that needs support. And we have to provide this support. And last but not least, research tasks, which are also very important. And by this, we refer to collaborations between client teams and their users in order to perform specific, to implement specific research objectives, smaller or bigger. So, um, important things to note, to observe, uh, remark about the uh, last year user involvement activities, that it we had a broad range of activities that were reported, different types of uh, activities, some of them reported for the first time, and this is the continuous user support activities and consultation. And what is important is that Clarin National Consortia 
seem to come closer uh, in closer contact with the users. And by doing this, they record, they actually record the user needs and try to, dis to respond to these uh, attested user needs by adapting the activities and the educational materials produced to these actual needs. And uh, one important comment is that it is not um, uh, sufficient to provide theoretical lectures, educational material only, if not complemented with practical hands-on sessions. And this um, uh, is important because, as we see, the integration of Clarin-related uh, material, Clarin-related content into university curricula is gaining ground, and we should take that into account. Thank you very much. <laughs>